ब्रह्म ज्ञान चिरंधस्य ज्ञानंजन शलाकाया चक्षुरिन मीनितम येन तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः हरे कृष्ण कंटिन्यूइंग डिस्कशन ऑफ व्यासदेव we in the gorya sampradaya the sampradaya coming from chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, count ourselves among the followers of yasadev and as all the various schools who claim allegiance to vyasay we also claim that the teachings that vyasa gave are best represented or properly represented in the gorya sampradaya others would contest that i mean apart from the non vaishnav schools who numerically constitute the majority of those who claim to be vaidikas or followers of the vedas Uh, among those who are vaishnavas the gorias their explanations are considered to be unorthodox the whole sampradaya is considered by those who consider themselves orthodox they especially the more orthodox members of their sampradaya tend to think of the gorya sampradaya as somewhat odd although the gorya sampradaya more than any other and, and brings the message of the shrimad bhagavatam which jiva goswami of the gorya sampradaya has established is the ultimate uh contribution of shila vyas or shila vyas himself shrimad bhagavate mahamuni krite kim va parai rishvara mahamuni vyas himself establishes within the bhagavatam that the bhagavatam is his ultimate contribution and the bhagavatam among other shastras given by vyasa dev establishes that kriteya dhyato vishnum tritayo yajato makai dwapare paricharya yam kalo tad hari kirtana that the worship of vishnu which is the uh, purpose of the vedas the purpose of vyasa's contribution was uh, performed in the kritya yoga or satya yoga by meditation in the treta yoga by sacrifice in dwarpa yoga by deity worship and in kali yoga by hari kirtan by congregational chanting of the holy names of krishna so that is certainly <coughs> speciality of the gorya sampradaya no no other sampradaya gives so much stress not only theoretically but practically on the chanting of the holy names we also find in vyasa dev's uh, shrimad bhagavatam ko shrimad bhagavatam is also that's been established by jiva goswami as eternal uh vyasa dev has given that to us krishna dwaipayana vyasa has given to that to us in this kali yoga so there we also find krishna varnam tvasha krishnam sangopangastra parshadam yagyai sankirtana prayar yajanti hi sumedasah 
that in Kali Yoga people who are intelligent, which isn't very many, because in Kali Yoga, Prayanal, Payasha, Sabhya, Kalava, Svinyuga, Janaha, Manda, Sumanda, Matiyo, Manda, Bhagya, Hiupadruta. In Kali Yoga people are miserable in every respect. Their character is miserable, their consciousness is miserable, everything about them is miserable, and they're stupid to boot. Uh, even, and even if they are, uh, even if they have any spiritual inclination, which is uncommon, then they get cheated also. And they don't live very long. So, all in all, Kali Yuga is miserable. But anyone who has any intelligence in Kali Yuga worships Krishna, who appears in this Kali Yuga as a Krishna, not Krishna appears in different form and is always chanting the name of Krishna they worship him by Sankirtan so this uh, indirectly establishes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who uh, who established in the world the Yoga Dharma of Hari Sankirtan. So, people, they may not accept this, but if we are to accept the Srimad Bhagavatam, then who else can this refer to if not Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Must refer to him. There's, there's no one else who has, he is the one who has done this, who has established Hari Kirtan in the world as the Yoga Dharma. And there are so many internal evidences in the Srimad Bhagavatam of this uh, Kirata, for instance, Kirata Hunandra Pulinda Pulkasha Abhira Gamha How is that verse? Abhira hmm? Shumba Yavanaka Sadaya Yene Chapapa Yadapashraya Shudyanti Tasmai Prabhavishnave Namaha Shukadev Goswami in praising the glories of powerful Vishnu he's powerful he creates, maintains and destroys millions of universes but his power is even more so established that by his devotees just by his devotees then all all the low class people of the world can be uplifted or that means uh, in all different parts of the world these, this uh, here refers to what would in modern parlance would be called uh, Germans Chinese Greeks, Turks, Europeans in general so all such people who have fallen they can be uplifted. So that's practically happened. It didn't happen previously. It didn't happen in Satya Yoga or, or Treta Yoga or Dwarpa Yoga, but it's happening now. So the proof of Srimad Bhagavatam uh, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu the proof what is the proof? the proof is all of you chanting Hare Krishna in this fallen Kali Yoga that people are seriously taking to spiritual life by chanting the names of Krishna the proof is that uh, all over the world people are doing that that is not possible that is only possible by genuine spiritual potency Kali, as it stated in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Kali Kale Dharma, Hari Nama Sankirtan, Kali Kale Yuga Dharma Nama Sankirtan, Krishna Shakti Bina Nahi Tar Pravartan, Hindi Anubad Ho Rahe Piche, Abjo Abhi Sab Aye Hai, Jo Angrezi Nai Samastai Abjo Sa Piche Jaye, Hindi Anubad. <clears throat> so the Gorya Sampradaya is considered unorthodox by those who 
don't go very deeply into the matter. It's not that difficult to understand that the Gorya Sampradaya, the Sampradaya of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is revealing the actual purport of Srimad Bhagavatam. But in more than one way, it's it's not just the chanting of Hare Krishna. Of course, Hare Krishna chanting is perfect and complete. So, when we say it's not just the chanting, that doesn't mean to minimize the chanting. But apart from the chanting of Hare Krishna, that is going on all over the world, which substantiates the uh, validity of the Hare Krishna movement, the Shastric validity. There is another very important way. That is that Chaitanya Mahabhu, his teachings, they are, they are of the worship of Radha and Krishna. And particularly uh, focused or the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu have brought out the, uh, the feelings, intimate feelings that Radha feels for Krishna as is expressed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Aslishyava padratam pinashtuma madarshanam marmahatam karotuva yatatata va avidatatu lampato but prananathas to saivanapara. This feeling of total attachment, not a, not a, not an int- not one that is conceptualized or formulated in one's mind, but a, a completely spontaneous, natural attachment to Krishna. That even if you trample me underfoot. Even if you mistreat me in the worst possible way, I will remain attached to you under all circumstances. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Radha Bhava Duti Suvalita. He is Krishna, Radha Bhava Duti Suvalita, Naomi Krishna Swarupa. Krishna with the bodily luster and feelings of Radha. So the, now those who want to uh, go by the letter of the law, this is actually the, there's the letter and the spirit. This is uh, discussion of the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. It actually goes back from uh, biblical study. This is an this is an English saying. Whether we should just take the exact literal meaning, or should we try to understand the uh, inner implications? Well, in Srimad Bhagavatam itself, we find that Krishna tells Ut. Uddhava Parokshavada Rishayo Paroksham Chamama Priyaha that the indirect or the, the the Rishis they speak in indirect ways. And that's also very dear to me. Which could leave a lot of speculation. But leaving their speculation aside, uh, those who are actually scholars of Vedic literature, Jiva Goswami, Rupa Goswami, Jiva Goswami, Baladevi Dhyakush, and so many great scholars, they have brought out the inner intent of Srimad Bhagavatam that even though the name of Radha is not mentioned directly but she's definitely there so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, Sampradaya aims at this and yes the, the worship of Radha and Krishna 
And therefore we find in Chaitanya Charitamrita this well there are many amazing statements actually all the statements are amazing but all statements are amazing but some are more amazing than others uh, one that may be very controversial uh, actually this is not composed by Krishna Das Kaviraj it's spoken by Lord Shiva Aham Ved Ni Shukho Veti Vyasa Veti Na Veti Va Bhaktya Bhagavata Grahya Na Medhya Na Chatikaya In which Lord Shiva says that Speaking about the Bhagavata That I understand it Shukadev Goswami understands it Maybe Vyasa Dev understands it Maybe, maybe not. But anyway, the uh, the Bhagavatam, Lord Shiva continues, is to be understood through bhakti and not through one's intelligence nor by study. So this may seem to be an extremely audacious statement or even a blasphemous statement so to suggest that Vyasa he doesn't know what he's writing <clears throat> so this is recorded in Chaitanya Charitamrita the uh, the verse that comes that uh, actually that's originally that uh, Sridhar Swami made his commentary on the Bhagavatam the commentary that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted and it was controversial controversy is nothing new if you think that there's so much controversy in the Hare Krishna movement well it's the whole history of Vedic culture that controversy over different uh, understandings and it goes on and on because different people try to establish their different ideas actually Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings that synthesizes everything anyway let's get back to Sri Daswam Sridhar Swami had made his commentary and, but not everyone is very happy with it so that was given to Vishwanath Vishwanath not to Vishwanath Chakravati you see he's translating Vishwanath Chakravati Sridhar Swami came so long before Vishwanath means in Varanasi for him to give the verdict this so he, he gave the verdict as he has done several times with various shastras that aham vedmi shukho veti vyasa veti na veti va shri dharam sakalam veti shri nrshinha prasadanat shri dhaswami was a worshipper of nrshimha so he, Shiva, Lord Shiva, Vishwanath said that I know, Shukadev knows, maybe Vyas knows, maybe he doesn't know but Sri Dhan, he knows everything by the mercy of Nrishimha the worshipable deity of, of uh, Sri Dhan so then this verse was uh, included, uh, modified somewhat in, included in Chaitanya Charitamrita with the general principle that the Bhagavatam can be understood not simply through scholarship and not simply by applying one's intelligence but by bhakti one is blessed to know as Vyasadeva himself has stated the yasya deve para bhakti yatha deve tata garo tasyaite katitahya tapakashante mahatmana one who has full faith 
or one who has full bhakti, devotion to Guru and God, to Him all the purports or imports of Vedic knowledge are revealed. <clears throat> so, this was given by Lord Shiva. It may sound very controversial, but in in Bhagavatam, Vyasadeva has stated that Lord Shiva is the greatest Vaishnava. And Lord Shiva, he says, well, maybe Vyasa knows, maybe he doesn't. So, what is the purport of this? Well, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Sampradaya claims, and we as his followers certainly accept that unconditionally, but we should also understand the claims that what is implicit in the teachings of Vyas has been made explicit by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What is not stated by Vyas has been stated by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his followers. We find the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu have written dramas and works on Krishna Leela. We don't find these Krishna Leelas in the Shastra given by Vyas. So, uh, well, well, but, but it is the conclusion that if, if we take Vyasa's teachings to their full conclusion, then it should come to this point. Sri Madhvachari has very strongly established the personality of Godhead in opposition to those who claim that the ultimate is absolutely non-differentiated. So, Madhvachari has established the personality of Godhead but the personal but the, the implications of the personality means that and the implications of him being the supreme enjoyer that is developed in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings to the full extent why should he be limited by any laws or morality conceived from our mundane platform or laws or morality that are suitable for regulating this madhouse of the material world. Why should Krishna be constrained by that? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings, they are the, they can be understood that they give the, the what is unspoken by Vyas. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has spoken that. And actually, uh, it should not be spoken here and there. It's secret and intimate. The private life of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So it's not meant to be spoken everywhere, but it should be spoken somewhere. Because if it's not spoken at all, then no one will know. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has spoken that which is unspoken. Vyasa, he didn't, of course, that stated that uh, Vyasa in his, uh, he is he's given indications of that, yes, Krishna Vanam, Trisha Krishna then elsewhere there in Shastra there are indications of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance but he hasn't uh, made it, he hasn't brought it out very clearly, there's a purpose for that, the very purpose of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's avatar is that he comes deliberately as an avatar but as a 
covered. He doesn't behave, in many ways he doesn't behave as a Vishnu avatar because he's taking the role of a devotee of Krishna. So uh, everything in the, 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 that Chaitanya Mahabharu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the purpose of his avatar, why it appears to not follow the ass, it may appear to, like that, but in actuality is the fully blossomed teaching of the ass. All this can be understood. It's not a concoction. It can all be understood by, uh, or, and it has been explained by the Gorya Acharyas. <clears throat> So Vyas, does he know or does he not? Well, that he didn't state it very clearly, uh, that seems to express some doubt. Of course, Lord Shiva, one possibility is that being on the level of the very high level up with Vyas, so he... It may be that he's joking a little. You see that Vyas, he wrote so many things. How to go to the moon, how to get sons, how to uh, kill your enemies, how to cure your diseases, how to worship different demigods. So many things Vyas wrote. Most of the things he wrote are pretty stupid actually. And not well from... Oh, they're written... Sorry, I'll retract that statement. They're written for pretty stupid people. The Vedas are for stupid people. They're actually for the most intelligent people, but they're presented in a way to appeal to the most stupid people, and the most stupid people think, this is very good. By doing this sacrifice, I can get born in the heavenly planets and uh, enjoy like a sophisticated pig. What is life in the heavenly planets? Living like a sophisticated pig. Very nicely enjoying sense gratification. So Lord Shiva may be joking, or just like Narad Muni, he, he chastised Vyasa. What nonsense you've done writing all these Vedas. He only came to compile the Vedas, he did that, and Narad came and told him, what a nonsense you are. So, these are the... Uh, these are the uh, difficulties of being Vyas. You do what you're supposed to do. You come to the world and then you get chastised for it. But then you, he wrote Srimad Bhagavatam. So maybe Shiva's being a little sarcastic there. Or by saying maybe Vyasa knows or maybe he doesn't know. Or does he know fully? It's questionable because Krishna is unlimited and even Krishna himself doesn't know himself fully or cannot understand himself fully which is why he comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Vyasa has uh, established the Vedas but then what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is given is beyond that which is normally or, or it's actually the fulfillment of but in other words beyond that which is normally considered the Vedic teaching and if we say this again some people are going to be very upset because they think well you can't go beyond Veda means everything but then again the, the Veda the subject matter is Krishna and Krishna is unlimited and particularly his appearance as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is uh, most secret most difficult to understand for the very reason that it cannot be understood by brain power nor simply by uh, studying Shastra or hearing Shastra Chaitanya Mahaprabhu can be understood by Bhakti but that is specific Bhakti 
those who are attracted to worship Krishna in a formal ritualistic way or in a manner of great awe and reverence which is good we should approach Krishna with awe and reverence but to go beyond that to the state of uh, intimate dealings with Krishna in which one can that's described in Srimad Bhagavatam Krishna is playing with his cowherd boyfriends Krishna is dancing with gopis Krishna is uh, chased with a stick by Yashoda Mai so to come to that level that kind of bhakti that is not possible simply by Nahi uh, Nahi Rakshati Dukran Karana that the uh, Shankaracharya said that we we cannot understand everything simply by studying grammatical conjunctions or studying Sanskrit. So similarly by a formal ritualistic approach to Krishna that kind of bhakti does not give entrance to the uh, intimate world of Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's cult is uh, completely sustainable by uh, intelligent discourse, but ultimately it goes beyond that. So Vyasa, does he know or does he not know? Yes, he knows everything. But nevertheless, there may be some things who the insights or the understanding that may be revealed by others. So what Vyasadeva has given, that has been revealed more by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his followers. So we worship Vyasa as the giver of the Vedic knowledge. Uh, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his followers actually in, in one sense they're even more worshipable even Vyas can worship the Gorya Acharyas because even what he has given but the, uh, the inner understanding that has been given by the Gorya Acharis, followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Jodi Gorna Hoito Tabeki Hoito Kemane Dharitande Radhar Mahim Prima Rasha Shima Jogate Jana Toke. If Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had not come, Vasudev Gosha said. If he had not come, how could we sustain our life? The uh, glories of Radha, which are the ultimate limit of Prema Rasa, who could have made that known to the world? Vyas didn't make it known. We're not denigrating Vyas here. We're here to glorify Vyas. But at the same time, that glorification will be complete if we see that what he has given has been what he has given has been fully explained and developed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his followers, which is maybe I'm speculating here, but uh, Srila Prabhupada he. Uh, in, in followers of Srila Prabhupada generally they don't like this word speculating but in one letter Srila Prabhupada uh, said that philosophical speculation or that which is along the line of the Shastra which uh, trying to understand how the points are correct whereas mental speculation means that you just run wild with your imagination so uh, now I forgot the point I was going to say. Philosophically, we can speculate. No, I lost it. I went off on a tangent and I couldn't come back to the point. What was I talking about? The Gorya Acharyas. Hmm? Yeah, I know, but what was I speculate? What was I going to speculate about? Hmm? Anyway, 
Yeah, yeah, but I, I have to go back further. I went off too far. Yeah, so Vyasa gave the Shastra. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed that more, and uh, I forgot what I was going to say. It came and it went. <laughs> It'll come back again at some other point. That's why I have to write down the things all the time. The thoughts come and go. Maybe it wasn't such a good speculation. Mental speculation, not philosophical speculation. So even Krishna doesn't know everything about himself. He comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to learn more about himself. To learn, but learning isn't everything. To experience himself. Bhakti is ultimately an experience. Pratyakshavagamang dharmya. What is the proof of bhakti? Ultimately the proof is the experience of bhakti. Raja Vidya Raja Guhya Bhagavad Gita is the most secret knowledge why is it most secret? Uh, you can find a copy of Bhagavad Gita anywhere there are so many copies of Bhagavad Gita but the, the experience of Bhakti which is the uh, top that is the topmost knowledge that's not available to anyone. It's not it's not available by any amount of study one cannot get that. One actually has that has to be personally experienced and that experience is the topmost knowledge. So knowledge uh, ultimately that leads to or gives way to the experience of the, the devotees how they are engaging in the uh, service of Krishna so Vyasadeva he gave uh, such a vast contribution the Vedas uh, in Kali Yoga people cannot study all the Vedas so there's a very easy system chanting the names of Lord Hari <laughs> Rig Veda, Yajar Veda, Sama Veda, Piyatar Vanaha, Adhita Stena Yeno Dvam, Harir Ityakshara Dvayam. Who chants the two syllables, Ha Ri? It's understood they've studied the complete Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, and Atarva Veda. So, what's left for Vyasadev to do? To, to establish that we should chant Hare Krishna. And who is this Hari who we are chanting about? Who is that Hari? What are the names, forms, qualities, pastimes, devotees, paraphernalia and dhams of that Hari that is established by Vyasadeva and that we should chant Hare Krishna but yeah, the, the Acharyas coming from Vyas they are in a sense more than Vyas in, in that they, they add to that, they clarify they, they bring out the, the message of Vyas. Vyas has established who says the name Hari. They've studied all the Shastra. And then the Gorya Acharyas especially, they have given the uh, understanding of chanting the holy names. It, it seems so easy. Just say Hari and then you know all the Vedas. But then we see that not everyone uh, appears to be <coughs> self-realized or learned in the Vedas even though they chant the name of Hari. So, Srila uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur and has established the, uh, the science or, or of the understanding of, of the chanting of the names of Hari and the import of that has been even more strongly preached and emphasized by Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati. Seeing so many people chanting the names of Hari but acting in a manner quite opposite to 
that which a chanter of Hari should chant. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur especially has strongly established this point that actual chanting of the name of Hari is the Sivan Muk chanting. The chanting that is in the mood of service with understanding, actual chanting, real chanting of the names of Krishna is not <coughs> an activity affected by the vocal cords and the mouth and the lips. It's not a physical activity. But it is with full consciousness of Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead and of ourselves as His unconditional servants. That is actual chanting. And chanting that is performed with uh, various incomplete, imperfect or offensive conceptions of who is Hari and of our position in relationship to Him, that does not constitute actual chanting of the Holy Name. So in this way, that which has been, been given by Vyas has been developed or explained in more detail and uh, with greater, under, greater understanding than Vyas himself gave directly. So in this way, we can say that uh, our Gorya Acharyas who are also called Vyas, they, they, they're representatives of Vyas, they're worshipped as Vyas. They have given what Vyas himself didn't directly give. So, Vyasa Viti Na Viti Va did Vyas what appeared in his mind by his meditation. Vyas is a Rishi. So, the Vedic knowledge appeared in his mind by meditation after uh, specifically after receiving instruction from Narada to compile uh, the Shastra which uh, is describing the names, forms, qualities and pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So in his meditation Okay, finished. Hare Krishna. That's it. We, I think we don't have a generator. We have a generator.
کشتا ہے in his meditation he uh, saw the supreme lord with his energies and he compiled the shrimad bhagavata so what was revealed to him at that time he compiled in shrimad bhagavata and later more was revealed chaitanya mahaprabhu revealed more and more was explained by the gorya acharyas So Vyas compiles the Shastra which is like a great ocean and the Gorya Acharyas they take the jewels from that ocean. So we worship Vyasadeva, we worship all the Acharyas from Vyasadeva and we make the bold claim which we can substantiate that uh, our acharyas are giving truths higher than we as personally expressed it's not against the teachings of vyasadi it's not denigrating vyasadi but bringing out that which vyas kept secret so it is a bold claim no doubt but the proof is there in that, that people in this kali yoga coming from the the worst backgrounds are clearly coming to the spiritual platform bhakti prashanu bhavo virakti ranyatra bhakti means attachment to krishna and detachment from everything else so that's practically seen that those who take seriously to this process of krishna consciousness so as given by chaitanya mahaprabhu chanting the holy names of krishna then they develop these qualities but it takes uh, an honest person or a sincere person to appreciate this anarpite chiring chirat karunya avatirno kalo samapiyatum samapiyatum unatajvala rasa svapakti shriya hari purata sundara juji kadamba sandipita sada hridiya kandare spurutu va sachinanda Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave that which had not been given for a very long time. The topmost resplendent rasa of devotional service unto himself. So it is a bold claim. Once in a day of Brahma. There are so many vyasas come and go in the day of Brahma. <coughs> but once krishna comes followed by chaitanya mahaprabhu and then he reveals this uh, which is not revealed by vyas so our worship of ah yes our worship of vyas yeah this is my philosophical speculation that we observe the vyasa puja day not ex- not on the same day as or the worship of vyas we don't conduct on vyas purnima 
We don't get mixed up with all those others. We don't mix up with all those who claim to follow Vyas. But their following is feeble at best. But we worship the uh, individuals who are bringing the message of Vyas in this world. So that's what the gurus should do is to convey the message of Vyas and that which is given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he is Vyas he is the source of everything so he has given teachings which may astonish even Vyasadeva himself so yes these are controversial statements we should substantiate this we should uh, some devotees should study and research these points and make presentations they will be required they're already required they will be required more and more if we are to solidly establish Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings in the world for the benefit of the world then this will be required the outline which I've touched on today that requires to be substantiated by uh, scholarly research everything cannot be understood by scholarship but scholarship is also required if we that's another mistake to say that well Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching Chaitanya Mahaprabhu it's all just feelings so don't bother studying anything that's another misunderstanding Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching should be substantiated by Vedic scholarship and uh, convince the scholars that ultimately by scholarship alone you cannot understand everything so this is required some some devotees should take this very seriously to study Shastra very deeply and uh, make presentations on various so many different topics to establish Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings life is short we don't have much time and uh, people don't have much brain power so uh, some devotees may do that not that everyone may do that sometimes I used sometimes I thought that well in my youth if I'd have studied more I could have understood more deeply and served the mission in a better way uh, I never studied Sanskrit but then again I thought that well I spent my youth running here and there or in various parts of South Asia, Southeast Asia holding pro actually those who are coming now they can't imagine what it was like in those days when it was uh, such a struggle in so many ways to establish the movement but um, Krishna has their plans for everyone and maybe at that time if I had gone into well maybe I was too active natured and if I had done, I, I, I wasn't ready for that or if I'd have tried that I may have been bewildered by the the dangers of scholarship and when we find so many devotees they become scholarly rascals they're devotees and then they become their scholarship turns them into a rascal and they think they know more than Vyasadu and more than Prabhupada which means they just become a rascal so it takes some it takes uh, maturity in devotional service also serious commitment in devotional service but anyway whatever position we may be in we should take that as Krishna's plan yes yes deve para bhakti yata deve tata guru tasyaite katitahyata prakashante mahama 
Not everyone can know every slope. Not everyone's going to learn the whole Srimad Bhagavatam or the whole Bhagavad Gita verses. But if one can take the essence, one, one can be blessed with the understanding of the essence by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and all the Acharyas, and that is the perfection of our life. We may be big scholars or may not be, but we should try to serve Krishna in whatever capacity we can and try to understand also these, uh, what is the, what is the uh, position of the Gorya Sampada. Why? Why are we in this movement? It's just if someone came along and we happened to join it. We might have joined some other, there are so many Hindu groups. Why are we here? What are we doing here? We should try to understand this. Siddhanta, Siddhanta Bolya Chitte Nakaraha Alash Eha Hoite Krishna Lage Surira Manash Try to understand, Krishna Kaviraj Goswami says, don't be lazy in trying to understand the teachings and the proper conclusions of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings because by doing so, one's mind becomes strongly attached to Krishna. So we should all try to understand within our capacity. What are the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? And by serving his mission, we become spiritually advanced by his mercy. Mm. Yeah. Understanding doesn't come just by study. Understanding comes by the mercy of Krishna through the disciplic succession Hare Krishna Is there any question about this? <laughs> you had some questions? I saw some piece of paper Some questions are there? Someone is giving some questions online? Hmm? We don't have a good enough connection. You had a question in the morning, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu says that in Italy recently some books were published in which Prabhupada's name was written and his, div his divine grace was not written. You mean on the title, on the cover? The books written by... I see, it didn't put his divine grace. Well, that's not good. I mean, we know that Srila Prabhupada very strongly objected when... Uh, some books were published. One book was published. His name was given as A.C. Bhaktivedanta. No Swami, no Prabhupada, no His Divine Grace. So Srila Prabhupada, he, uh, he understood from this that the devotees were not in proper consciousness. So how can it happen nowadays? Well, Maya is going on every day, past, present and future. So don't be surprised. You've heard in the history books about the Jews being taken to the concentration camps and slaughtered. What about, never mind about the Jews in Croatia and 
Bosnia, very nasty activities in in your country in your lifetime. Very horrible killings, whole villages just shot dead. You wonder how that could happen in the past. It will all happen in the future also. You can write the history of the future. Jews being taken to con- or someone else being taken to concentration camps, genocide, all these horrible things, they're coming. They've been and they're coming also. That is the history of the world. People are performing sinful activities and they will get the result. So it's not that, well, Maya was in the past and it can't happen in future. During that, uh, I saw some report during the this newspaper report during this uh, Serbo-Croatia, Bosnian, like there were like about four different parties, wasn't it? Four or five, it was all myths. Serbs, Croats, Bosnian Muslims, Bosnian Christians, and Croatian Serbs, and Serbian Croatians, they're all... One day they're fighting on uh, side by side, the next day they're fighting against each other. It was a complete mess. So some uh, American newspapers, they, they wrote, well, how can this happen in Europe at the end of the 20th century? Because we're supposed to be enlightened. They're fools. They think it can't happen. Worse things are yet to come. Never mind about Hitler. There will come a time when the whole planet will burn. Sinners repent. And under Dave will where the fire from his mouth will burn the, the, the Lord Shiva on top will be dancing and underneath Ananta will be burning and the whole universe will go up and sm- it will all be burned so you know, who cares about a little concentration camp so bad things are to come Vyasadeva has given it all Maya is there we shouldn't think that Maya cannot happen. In one sense, we should not be shocked by anything, however bad things may be. In fact, we haven't seen many bad things in this lifetime. So many bad things may come. Yeah. I was talking about education and what not. Education and what not to do. Hmm? Sadhana city and Kripa city. What's the question? I couldn't understand. Maharaj, your position, is it Prabhupada's mercy or is it your qualification? My position. My position is Jagai Madai Hoite Muito Papishta Puri Shaya Ki Hoite Muito Lagishta Jai Mora Nam Shune Tara Punya Koi Jai Mora Nam Loi Tara Papa Hoi If anyone can actually say that, that Srila Prabhupada quoting these verses, the Krishna's Kaviraj writes that I am more sinful than Jaga and Madhai, lower than a worm in stool. Anyone who hears my name, their uh, pious activities are diminished, and anyone who says my name becomes sinful. So Srila Prabhupada explained that. He wasn't just writing this as a kind of poetic, artificial humility, but he really felt that. 
So I should say that. I mean, at least I should understand that. Or try to understand that. But Krishna is Kaviraj Goswami, the most exalted, as he himself wrote, that Uttam Hoya Apanake Din Hinamani. That who is most exalted thinks himself the most fallen. So, what am I doing sitting on this big seat? Yes, of course, it's Prabhupada's mercy. That's obvious. That's obvious. Isn't it? But it's the point that most of the devotees are going to take a decision. So, this would be Kripa City for them or Sadhana City? Is it Kripa City for them? Or is it Sadhana City? Well, it's not City in and of it. Take initiation, so. If you think just take initiation is Siddhi, you better read the books again. We're all dependent on the mercy of Krishna and his devotees. They tell us to perform sadhana, and if we don't, we get in a lot of trouble. We see the devotees who stop chanting Hare Krishna, they lose Krishna consciousness. They, they chant 16 rounds, then one day they miss, then another day they miss, and they start chanting 8 rounds, I'm too busy, I don't have time, I don't have taste. And then they lose it altogether. Often devotees ask that, well, he said, I'm chanting so many years, I don't have any taste. Anyway, go on chanting. What's the, what's the proof that you're getting an effect from that chanting? Definitely you're getting an effect. We can see that by those who stop chanting. Those who stop chanting lose it altogether. So d- definitely, even if our chanting isn't up to the level that it should be or we'd like it to be, the effect is there. The minimum effect is that we're still going on in Krishna consciousness at all. Because if we stop chanting our rounds, even if the mind is going on a tour of the universe, which it shouldn't, while we're chanting, but some or other by that chanting that at least sustains us. Sadhana is required, but the the uh, what gives that any strength is the um, it, is the mercy of Krishna, which is coming through the acharyas. Yoga the bichare kichu nahi pai tomara karuna sha. That's our motto. Thank you. Hare Krishna. We'll wind up the program here. Everyone, please take prasad, or if you like, you can not take prasad. It's up to you. I mean, I know most of you will, but if I had a big meal at this time of night, I'd be finished for the next two days at least. Anyway, all of you have got strong digestion, so take prasad, take rest early, get up, see you all tomorrow morning in Mongolati, 5 o'clock. I have one announcement to make also that um, devotees who want to meet me personally it's not that easy because it's a busy schedule but uh, on Sunday afternoon after lunch I should be somewhat free so those who are leaving on Sunday they could try and catch me at that time and I'll be in, I'll be in Gujarat so I, I can meet devotees in Gujarat and Pune and Belgaon and Goa so I'll be in all these places within the next